For the past decade, U.S. tech businesses that receive federal financing are not permitted to construct advanced technology facilities in China. One of the first and most visible victims of the U.S.-China trade war, Huawei saw a major drop in recent years. Huawei High Silicon dropped out of the top 25 worldwide semiconductor suppliers on April 17th as a result of U.S. trade restrictions that affected China's overall share of the global chip market. But Huawei is determined to not let the U.S. leave the Chinese chip industry high and dry. High Silicon has been trying to rebuild this domestic supply chain of the semiconductor industry. For this, even more outdated and incomplete systems from 2018 are being revived, which should aid Huawei in re-entering the market. Let's dive into the details of the event and see how Huawei is currently dealing with its difficult situations. Hello, welcome everyone to this channel and don't forget to subscribe. Huawei is the sole owner of High Silicon, a Chinese fabless semiconductor manufacturer with headquarters in Shenzhen, Guangdong. High Silicon is China's top domestic integrated circuit designer. In 2020, the United States implemented regulations requiring permits from American companies supplying certain equipment to High Silicon or from non-American companies utilizing American technologies that supply High Silicon. Reuters reports that the action effectively blocked Huawei's equipment from U.S. telecom networks due to national security concerns by prohibiting Huawei from purchasing essential parts and components from American businesses without a special permit. The U.S. Department of Commerce increased sanctions in October 2022. The U.S. sanctions against China caused significant setbacks for Huawei, a burgeoning and significant challenger to Western industry chip giants by 2020. According to a report, High Silicon's revenue dropped significantly by $6.7 billion, or 81%, from $8.2 billion in 2020 to $1.5 billion in 2021. This was especially apparent in smartphones, which were no longer powered by Google or TSMC CPUs. According to Su Zhijian, the company's acting chairman, High Silicon is Huawei's chip design department not a lucrative business, and we don't have a profit requirement for it. As a result of the U.S. embargo, domestic consumers are forced to select homegrown chips, accelerating China's semiconductor industry's growth. This choice was made in response to calls from a number of industry organizations in the United States for greater governmental action to lessen the country's dependency on China and a microchip shortage that hindered output. Because of the U.S. restrictions, Huawei is unable to purchase goods and is forced to rely increasingly on domestic producers, even going so far as to develop its own chips. With an anticipated investment of more than 55.8 billion USD, the active talent recruitment in the semiconductor industry, Huawei and its local government-backed partners are creating an extensive chip production infrastructure in many major Chinese cities. The Self-Reliance Strategy of Huawei, aka Huawei's Liberation Plan a chip manufacturer that was on the verge of closing down four years ago after being accused of stealing trade secrets by the U.S. is now quietly operating once more in the port city of Quanzhou in the Fujian province of southeast China. All of a sudden, a mysterious new customer shows up, and it all begins anew. Glass structures are being repolished, trees are being trimmed, and lawns are being mowed on the site of chip manufacturer Fujian Zhenhua Integrated Circuit Company. Since the beginning of the year, a number of engineers, buyers, and finance studio workers have also arrived from the same client to support JHICC's efforts to resume production. In order to minimize attention, they requested that JHICC workers refer to them by their English names rather than their Chinese ones. However, everybody knows who this mysterious client is. They come from the technological powerhouse Huawei, China's technological leader, whose semiconductor chip supply has been hampered over the past two years as a result of increasingly severe U.S. sanctions. JHICC got a chance thanks to the shortage of semiconductor chips. The business is a component of a new self-sufficiency strategy that Huawei has covertly developed throughout China from Beijing to its base in Shenzhen. Huawei has informed a number of vendors that it plans to increase production by 50% over the next two years. A former worker of China's largest chip manufacturer, Nara Technology Group, who is now employed by JHICC, stated, The factory is now back up and running. We're here to help because all previous support teams from U.S. corporations have already left. 
most of the items we produce are for Huawei. While everything is going on, a second facility the size of 20 football fields is being built by Kuliang Electronics, a little-known firm that offers chip boxing services, directly opposite of JHICC. The company's responsibility is to cover the microchips in a sturdy plastic shell to shield them from shock, moisture, and dust. The facility is also intended to satisfy Huawei's expanding demand. A Kuliang employee verified that the company currently has 2,700 workers and is constructing the second phase of the factory. To name just two, Huawei's plans for its local supply chain are illustrated by JHICC and Kuliang. Another chip facility, Peng Shin Wei, which is not distant from Huawei's corporate headquarters, is also in operation. Peng Sheng Zhu, a similar sounding chip firm, is also looking for engineers to staff a plant it plans to erect in Shenzhen. Both businesses are totally autonomous, as is Sui Shure Technology, a startup launched this year whose management includes a former senior employee from the renowned chip manufacturer TSMC, Taiwan, and Elpida Memory, Japan. The most significant client for each of the three is Huawei. With an estimated capital expenditure, Huawei and its partners are establishing new chip production systems and assembly lines in Beijing, Wuhan, Qingdao, and Shenzhen with the assistance of local governments throughout China. For its research facilities in Europe and at home, Huawei is also actively seeking talented individuals from all around the world. In addition to concentrating on design, they are also looking to revamp the entire supply chain including everything from producing and packing chips to processing raw materials and manufacturing machinery. In comparison to before the US restrictions, the supply of Huawei is still quite limited from a variety of sources. But Huawei is determined to beat the US this time too, just like it overtook Apple in 2019. With that being said, we come to the end of this video. Will Huawei successfully survive all these US sanctions? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and share it with your friends. Please subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to stay updated about our latest content.